Turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of John, into chapter 8. The Gospel of John, and we will first look into chapter 8. For context, really where we're going to start in verse 12 doesn't necessarily spring forth from what comes before it in the verses that come before it. Um, it's an instance in which uh, those who are standing there and they're, they're accusing a woman and she has been in sin even as they have and Jesus has been telling them, you know, he who is without sin cast the first stone and they leave. And so we know that it kind of starts anew when Jesus starts talking to them, them again in verse 12. And so that, that previous context, even it, it does... There may be something to it that this follows that directly, but as far as in the context of Jesus speaking, it starts anew, so it must be a new time uh, that Jesus starts speaking to them. And he says in verse 12, John chapter 8, Again therefore Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It is that statement, and of course this isn't the only place, and we, we're not going to even try to look at all the places that talk about the light of the world, but this is, this is one of the places, and, and it's, it's one of seven times within John, and we may even spend some more time with that in weeks to come, where Jesus starts out a phrase, I am, which is a powerful statement coming from that is who God is. Even as Moses, back in the time when he was wanting to give excuses to not go uh, deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, he asked God, who, who shall I say has sent me? And God says, I am has sent you. That's what you're going to tell them. And so Jesus, using that phrase, if nothing else would have gotten under the skin of those who didn't believe that he was the Son of God, those who didn't believe that he was the Messiah, and so that phrase in and of itself would have caught their attention immediately. And so we, sometimes it's easy just reading through to miss some of that. But Jesus uses this phrase, I am. And he says, I am the light of the world. I don't think we can talk about Jesus being the light of the world without seeing John chapter 1. So turn back to John chapter 1. We're going to look at light just a little bit there and, and the, what, what this passage says about Jesus being the light. John probably talks about the light of the world and, and our pattern of life probably more so than any other apostle, any other one that Jesus worked directly with. So most of the passages we're going to be looking at today are in John or in 1 John. But in John chapter 1, just starting at the first verse, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if we're familiar with Scripture, then we look at that and we, we automatically make conclusions. If we're not familiar with Scripture, then maybe we actually look at it uh, in a deeper way than we would if, if we didn't have already have some preconceived ideas. But this idea in the beginning was the Word. Well, if, if we're thinking about a word, what is it? It's a means of communication. In the beginning was the word. You know, if we went back to, to Genesis, um, it starts in the beginning of the creation of the world. Here, in the beginning was the word, a communication. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And so, this is a communication that is not only with God, but a communication that is God himself communicating. And so he says, that's in the beginning, that's in the start. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him. And apart from him, nothing has come into being that has come into being. And so when we, when we look back at places like Genesis chapter 1, how did God create all of this? By a word. God said, let there be. And there was. And so the Word of God was creating, and even as he's saying here, if we're just looking at this as this is God's communication to mankind, 
then he's saying all things came into being by him, and so it's automatically attributing this to somebody. Somebody being the word. Somebody being the communication. All things came into being by him, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's the part that we're getting to here. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, we need to understand the difference between something that's physical and something that's spiritual. He's saying here, I am the light of the world. And when it describes that light, in verse 4 of 1 John chapter 1, says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Well, which is it, the light or the life? Somebody says, well, I take everything that the Bible says um, literally. Well, this isn't talking about literal light. It's talking about something spiritual. It's talking about something that, that we can understand when he says the word light, just like we can understand when he says the word, that that's a means of communication. It's very difficult to communicate without words. I mean, even if you use sign language, you're using words, right? You know, you, you, it is the means of communi- communication. I mean, you can point, but even that associates with a word in one way or another. And so likewise, when he says light, well, we can understand light to some degree, can't we? John? Who's sitting there? No, Craig, turn him off for a second. Well, there went part of them. Here goes the rest of them. Now turn them back on. Not exactly, but it's sort of like day and night, right? We understand the difference. It's amazing when you go outside of a night and and look around. Of course, we live out in the country, and so you go outside, and if the moon's not up, it's dark. You go outside in the daytime, it's light. But it's amazing when you walk out there and the moon's up and the moon's full, how light it is. That you can see, I mean, every little detail, just like you can see in the daytime, a little bit different, but there's a light there, and so you can see things. And it's, it's beautiful. We, we enjoy it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of songs written about the moon and the light that it gives. And so we, we understand those things about light. Those things that are, are very simple to understand about light, um, part of what we, we don't get, unless we study it a little bit further, unless we go a little bit deeper into it, you know, there's, there's parts of light that we don't see, right? Infrared, ultraviolet, I mean, two opposite ends of the scale that we cannot see with the naked eye. I mean, anybody have an infrared camera or binoculars or anything like that? Several of you I know do, one that has night vision on it, you know, that you, you can look through it and you can see things in the dark. Everybody else doesn't know that you're shining a light on them when, they're, when you're doing that, except for they see that little red light that says that it's on. Because we cannot see that. We can make a camera that can see that, but we can't see that, not with our naked eye. So we, we miss part of that to some degree. Well, here in John chapter 1, listen to what he says about the light here. Verse 4 again, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. To some degree, we might be able to claim, well, that's that area of light. If we're comparing, if we're making comparisons to light physically and light spiritually, it's that, it's that part of light that people can't see. It's that part of life that people cannot understand. And undoubtedly, there are things of God that we cannot grasp. There are things of God that we cannot understand. We are in these physical bodies. We're placed in a physical setting. There are certain things that are...